families anyway, so I think they're prepared to continue. Let's talk about the length of time that all of this took. In my opinion, uh, you know, even OJ, I, I, I don't remember something happening in February and then somebody reaching a verdict in August. It all happened relatively quickly, six months. Does that hurt somebody? Does that help somebody? And if so, who? Well, it's, uh, the defense strategy in this case was to try this case really in record time. There's never been a death penalty case in San Diego County history that's been tried so soon after the homicide. I think uh, it was a smart strategy. I think that if they had hung the jury or if they turn out winning the case, or even if they don't get a death penalty in the case, which would also be a victory, I think, um, I think it's partly because their strategy was to just try the case now uh, rather than wait and see whatever other things might uh, come up. Okay. And so you think it was probably hurtful for the defense or helpful? I, I think it was probably, usually usually on a, on a murder case, a particular capital case, you want to put it off years if you can. And usually you can do that. But in this case, I think the defense probably was smart in picking this strategy. They wanted to try the case right away. They've been working around the clock seven days a week, as has the prosecution. But I think in this case it was, it was unprecedented, but I think it was very smart. Okay. Being a defense attorney and a defense attorney for a very long time here in San Diego County, what is going through the minds of the attorneys right now, or what can you imagine is going through the minds of the attorneys right now? Well, when, when the jury is deliberating, it's absolutely excruciating for the lawyers on both sides, and you try to go back to all the work that's been piling up on your desk while you've been trying the case, because during a murder trial, you don't work on anything else. But then once, if every time the phone rings, it's just like a knife in your stomach. It's just uh, excruciating, and now it's the worst part of all. You're down there waiting for the verdict, and you know, to hear it read out in open court, it's uh, it's a tough time for the lawyers and the families, too. The what do you think, Glenn? Innocent or guilty? Huh? Guilty. All right. Well, there's a difference of opinion. How did you get the word? What brought you down here? Actually, I work right next door. All right. Yeah. And uh, when did you get the word and how? I got it at about 10 o'clock from this. One of my employees called me and said, uh, go down the courthouse, they're going to announce it. And so you're reporting to all your friends. You're the correspondent for your friends and family. <laughs> Trying to be, yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. As you can see, a uh, great deal of interest, uh, a lot of cell phones being popped out, and uh, oh boy, what a show, Captain. Back to you. I just brought up this point that they can't see. How are they going to find out how this turns out? Do they, are they, do they see the monitors there where all the media is, or what? Exactly. Every, every media position here, as you look uh, up one side of the block, down the other, and the media encampment goes that way, and it also goes onto the uh, courthouse block. Uh, they've got monitors set up. Uh, uh, no doubt people uh, you know, are on cell phones uh, with people that are watching on TV. So uh, this is a very, very informed uh, street uh, jury of public opinion, you might say. And uh, this kind of thing also happened, I was up at the O.J. Simpson verdict uh, back in October of 1995, and uh, things were on radio, things were on monitors, so th the word gets out very quickly. It's, uh, it's pretty much instantaneous, and uh, as I say, uh, I'm going to estimate a crowd of uh, 200 at least out front, but uh, up in the hallways and throughout the courthouse, it's a beehive as, uh, as people want to plug in and, uh, and uh, get the payoff here. And I would suspect security in the building, Gene, is probably beefed up just a bit this, at this hour. Absolutely, and the, uh, the entrances to the courthouse, uh, that sort of thing. We, we did see uh, uh, the defense team go in about 15 minutes ago. And when they bring David Westerfield in, as they must through the uh, through the hallway, they will block off that hallway and form a cordon, uh, part the sea of people, as it were, to let him by. And uh, he'll be then walked in a back hallway uh, down the, past the judges' chambers and uh, into the courtroom. And uh, the seating arrangements, I think Roy has described to you in the uh, in the courtroom, there will not be an empty seat. And uh, next door in department 41, uh, that has been vacated wall-to-wall yeah. -wall there. I'd say probably a good 30 to 40 people inside department 41 and next door to Judge Mudd's department. David Westfield being brought in under heavy security. He is, by the way, just down the street, right, Gene, in isolation? Uh, that's jail? correct, uh, as he has been the entire time. The, uh, the weekend that he was brought in back in uh, February, uh, word got out that he had been directly threatened, uh, people yelling up and down the corridor. So um, he's... Uh, He's in a situation where he's not going to be subjected to that, but obviously he knows that uh, the, should the verdict go against him, that uh, he's got uh, some severe, uh, severe issues to deal with, uh, depending on what the sentence is going to be.
All right, Gene Kevison, thank you very much. We want to point out, up, it looks like we are going to the courtroom right now. We expect that verdict to be read any second, Judge Mr. Bunn. Westerfield, um, here. I mean, the prox the, with the proximity of all the offices, I think it's, you know, it's, it's fairly easy for everyone to, you know, to just walk down and... Uh, my friend Ed, just to let him know that uh, I'm by right, right here where the verdict will hopefully uh, be a guilty. What, what are you telling him? Paint word pictures. Uh, give I'm him just, some uh, atmosphere. I'm letting my friend know that I'm actually downtown supporting uh, being here and just What, what do you make about what you're seeing, what you're hearing? Oh, I've, I've been on this case for the beginning. And I just, uh, from all the evidence I've gathered and everything I've, I've seen, that I really believe that uh, it should be a guilty verdict. So that's what you're expecting. Absolutely. So I'm, I, I'm hoping. And I'm hoping it's not going to turn into another OJ situation. Are you missing work? Mug suddenly pops up here in this No, uh, in this but I, I do want to call some of my friends and get them out here as well, hopefully to support this. And let it was going through their minds and how they reached that decision. And so we are hopeful that out of the 12 people, at least one of them will speak to us when all of this is said and done about what was going through their mind, what was going on in that jury room. However, we will not know. That may be today. It may be today that we may be talking to those jurors because come back with an acquittal. However, if not, and that is what all the legal analysts out here are betting, that it will not, that it will be a guilty verdict, then uh, it will be some time before we hear what does go through their mind. No, yeah. Gina, and we're getting word from the courtroom right now. I guess the Van Dams, Brenda and Damon Van Dam, have entered the courtroom. Brenda apparently looked visibly shaken, and Damon also looked very upset, understandably. Did you by any chance see them walking through the courtroom, or has there been any, any talk about the Van Dams arriving there? No, all I, all I hear out here is uh, people's condolences for the family. They say certainly the attorney and Mr. Westerfield are having a very tough time right now. They're probably just in agony over what the jury is going to say. But really, the family members, um, whether it comes down uh, with... Societal um, issues that may be raised. So we are not seeing, as we saw up at Los Angeles, uh, 100 officers on horseback. Um, uh, riot gear ready in case uh, in case things blew up. This uh, this is a verdict that uh, that has very little to do with the kind of dynamic that was going on up in L.A. in October I, 1995. I just, uh, usually, though, when you've got a large crowd downtown on a on a street, we get some sense of presence at least. Right, we'll and and there, it's, 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 I I may be unaware of traffic control that's happening, but I'm no, not, not seeing a uniform you. presence where they're pushing through the crowd and worrying that right. there might be some menacing aspect of this. All right, thank you, Gene. Uh, you, really, Michael, I can tell you that for the Van Dams, you could sense that it was a big sigh of relief when those verdicts came in a short time ago. Damon Van Dam had been singled out uh, by the judge for staring down uh, David Westerfield during this trial, had been in fact punished for it, and, and we know that he has been accused, uh, the Dam Van Dams, both of them, of trying to drive away potential buyers of David Westerfield's home, uh, which is now owned by Stephen Feldman, not wanting Feldman to profit from this, so they have been quite angry. In all of the Van Dams' reactions this morning, did you see any trace of anger, particularly on Damon's face? You know, I saw both of them look over at David Westerfield momentarily in between when the verdicts were being read. Um, obviously, David Westerfield did not see their reaction because he did not turn around. But l most of the attention, honestly, Michael, they were uh, all over each other. I mean, they were hugging, they were kissing, they were holding each other's hands. Uh, they also, I, at one point, I saw them both sort of acknowledge the jury. They kind of looked in their direction as if to say thank you very much, not only but on behalf of us, but of course, of our daughter. You, you said earlier something that struck me kind of interesting because I had noticed it on, on the uh, live feed that we had there. You said early on you saw David Westerfield smile just a little bit before this was read. You think he pretty much knew his foregone conclusion this was guilty verdict? You know, it's anybody's guess on his face. I mean, he, he obviously knew that it wasn't good news. All right, uh, Phil Blower, Phil, uh, our eyes inside uh, the courtroom there. Thank you so much for sure. those uh, excellent observations.